Hi guys, welcome back to Clover Hill, the 19th century house that Mr. Fox and I are restoring. I'm sorry about the noise, but right now we're having one of the bedroom floors refinished upstairs. Anyway, in one of the previous videos, I mentioned that Mr. Fox and I are only the fifth owners of this house. It stayed in the same family's hands from 1826 until 1975. And in 1975, the new owners gutted the original kitchen wing and turned it into rental apartments. Then they assaulted the formal dining room and turned it into an Eden kitchen. I'll show you what we did with the rental apartments in a future video. Meanwhile, today I'd like to show you the now restored dining room. So let's step inside. Here is the room as it appeared around 1890. A descendant of the original owner sent me this picture, or rather a Xerox copy of the picture. As you can see, the room was furnished at that time with a late Victorian sideboard. I chose to give the room an even earlier, more federal look. Restoring this room wasn't easy. We had to remove all of the kitchen cabinets and appliances. We even removed an enormous wood-burning stove that stood in front of this very nice fireplace. The fire surround is uh, black Egyptian marble, and I really like the gray and beige veining in the marble. It's a great fireplace. The angled sides and shallow depth of the firebox, I think it's a Rumford design, produce all the radiant heat needed to warm the room quickly and efficiently. Of course, Lily the Biggle likes a warm fire too. After we replastered the walls and the ceiling, I painted the chair rail and the wainscoting Benjamin Moore Dove White, or maybe it was China White. No, it was Dove White. Dove White has a lot of gray in it. And then I painted, painted the upper walls Benjamin Moore Mulberry. Mulberry contains a lot of blue, so even though it's a red color, blue furnishings look really good in the room. This is a blue and white ginger jar from the Victorian era. Of course, red walls demand plenty of bling. I suspended this gilt-framed oval mirror uh, between the two windows. The mirror was found in an antique shop. It's a federal piece. And speaking of windows, I store my firewood on a porch right outside the dining room. This way, I can open a dining room window and just bring in the, the wood I need. I don't have to trudge through three feet of snow. The window on the right is one of the floor to ceiling windows for the parlor. There's more bling at the north end of the room. It's an elaborately carved early 19th century mirror painted in gold leaf. And if you're wondering about this item, it's a 19th century spirit kettle. I found it in London about 20 years ago. And the idea is you, you put water in it and you heat it with a little spirit lamp beneath. And then you can tilt the thing to pour hot water into your tea. In the center of the room is the dining table. We bought this federal piece at auction. When fully opened, it seats 12 guests. Finding 12 matching federal chairs wasn't easy, but find them we did at an auction in New Orleans. And just to let you know where you are in the house, the door on the right leads to the entrance hall and this door on the left leads to a pantry, which in turn leads to our kitchen. And on the opposite side of the room are these pocket doors, which lead to the music room. In closing, I'd like to say that when we first found this room as a rundown kitchen, it seemed to cry out for help. I hope it's happy with our restoration job. We certainly love the room. In winter, it's great fun to dine here, both by candlelight and firelight. If you'd like to see other rooms in the house, please post a comment below. And don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.